up guys, it's John with GoSD. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through installing a GBW255-919-059, which is this really rad printed circuit board replacement kit. We're also gonna install a GBW cool alarm kit, which is really cool. So let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is remove our instrument cluster. If you're not familiar with how to do that, click this link right here and the video will walk you through it. So with our instrument cluster out, let's find a nice table and go install our kit. This kit has been designed for easy installation. However, it does involve some wiring, and installation is not within everyone's ability. Read through your provided instructions carefully and watch this video in its entirety to decide if installing it is for you. If not, please take your vehicle to an automotive electrician. We want to start by twisting out the three bulbs along the top of the instrument cluster, then the two Phillips head screws holding the black plastic bracket onto the back of the cluster. I begin removing the stock foil from the right, working to the center. Next, remove the two outer Phillips screws from the left side, the screw holding down the heat sink, and unplug the tachometer. Remove the nuts from the studs along the bottom of the cluster, the black plastic clip at the main plug-in, and the clock bulb to finish removing the foil completely from the cluster. Next, determine if you have the stock dynamic oil pressure system by the presence of the 9-pin plug on the back of the speedometer. If you do not have a dynamic oil pressure warning system, you'll need to turn this tiny dip switch on the back of the new circuit board up, into the on position. If you do have a dynamic oil pressure system, you need to make sure this switch is down, in the off position. With that sorted, grab the included blue, green, and red LED bulbs and two white plastic spacers. Using the longer of the two spacers, trim the green and blue bulbs legs to the proper length like so. Repeat the same process with the red LEDs using the shorter spacer. These bulbs can now be installed into the circuit board. You should hear a slight snap when they fully register into their sockets. Notice that each bulb is flat on one side and has a very small protrusion on the other. This indicates the polarity of each leg on the bulb. The flat side is a negative leg, while the side with the slight protrusion is positive. The sockets in the new board are marked by polarity, so install the bulbs accordingly. With our bulbs installed, slide the voltage regulator into place and secure it onto the board using the included screw and heat sink spacer hardware. Set this circuit board aside, grab the tachometer circuit board and metal cage and snap them together like so. If you have an analog clock, you can grab a tasty beverage and sit back for this next section. This board will need to be plugged into the back of the cluster. The four pins of the cluster must register into the female sockets of the board, which can be tricky to get aligned properly. If they aren't properly seated, the board will wiggle slightly like this. When they are properly seated, the board will be much more solid on the back of the cluster, like this. With that board installed, grab the digital clock circuit board and install it onto the cluster. This board has two similar connector pins that we need to properly register onto the board before we secure it using the two small Phillips head screws. Next we can grab the single LED cluster light, slip one of the included O-rings around the end like this, twist the bulb into place, and connect the small two-pin plug to the clock circuit board. If you have a digital clock, go grab yourself a tasty beverage and enjoy this next section for all of our analog clock users out there. Analog people, grab the brown and red wired harness, plug the red wire into the small male tab on the back of the clock, and attach the brown wire to the ground provision using the stock screw. Grab the gauge LED harness, slip the included O-rings onto the ends of each bulb, and twist those three bulbs into place along the top of the cluster like so. Now grab the gauge harness and secure the eyelets to their corresponding posts on the back of the cluster in the orientation shown. Early air-cooled vans and analog clock users will connect this harness differently. Refer to your included instructions for those directions. A related item to this new circuit board is our GVW-Cool-Alarm-Kit. To install this kit, grab the circuit board and push the red and black wires into the small black port on the bottom of the board until they register securely. Bolt the board to the cluster in the orientation shown with our harness wires secured over the board. Next adhere the supplied velcro to the bottom of the small alarm and trim the excess around the sides.
Remove the adhesive backing and affix the alarm to the bottom of the cluster on the tachometer side. Grab the included length of foam tubing and cut it in half, and then slice one wall open along the length of each tube. Slide the tubing down the edge of the white indicator housing like so until it registers against the front of this portion of the cluster. Bend the tubing down along the edge of the housing, trim it to length, and repeat this process for the other side. With our tubing bent down, we can install the main board onto the cluster. Take your time to ensure that the bulbs are properly seated in their housing and secure the board using two of the stock screws. Plug the upper LED bulb harness into the top of the board, clock harness into the bottom, and the gauge harness into the receptacle on the lower left side. If you have a tachometer, plug the brown, black, and green wired harness into the board on the back of the tachometer, and then the opposite end into the receptacle on the mid left side of the circuit board. Now we can plug our main wiring harness into the large receiver on the bottom of the board and use the included zip ties to cleanly tuck all of our wires up tight to the cluster. We're about ready to reinstall the cluster into the van. However, before we do, let's take a look at the connector in the vehicle. If you have an early 1980 to 1984 vehicle, you'll need to do a little wire swapping at this connector. The written instructions included in your kit have charts showing the specific pinout locations for each colored wire. Here's a connector that's been removed from the van. To swap the wire position, we simply pop the back of the cover up and slip any of the wires out of the connector, place them into their correct spots, and close the lid. When you're all done, the wire colors between the two plugs should match. Plug the new connector into the vehicle connector, being sure to get proper contact between the pins of the two, and reinstall the cluster back into the vehicle as normal. On a side note, if the tabs in your cluster are broken, like the ones on this cluster, you can use our cluster-tab-kit, which is a simple fix comprised of stainless steel tabs that capture the remaining plastic of the cluster and secure it nicely to the dashboard. And that's it, you're all done.